my name is Sue Wilson. I'm a glass blowing artist down at AO Glass on Pine Street, right here in Burlington. Um, I was going to say student glass blowing artist, but I'm not a student. I'm just learning. So uh, I started about eight years ago in Chicago and couldn't stop from the first day I picked it up. It's a little joke, joke about uh, shop safety, so that runs at about 2200 degrees, so it's a little warm. Um, what I like about glass blowing is uh, my dad is a tool and die machinist, so um, I appreciate that it's kind of this industrial, metal, dirty process that ends with a beautiful glass piece um, while well, I'm working on that anyway. <laughs> Glass is really interesting. There was a debate for a long time in science about uh, liquids versus solids and plasmas and what category it is. The point is with glass, you're working with it in between states. When it's really hot, it behaves like a liquid, and when it's cool, it behaves, behaves like a solid, and you, your job is to work with it in that in-between state. Um, I'm still learning a lot about color in glass blowing, but it's a mix of chemical and heat and time. So you can roll it in the crushed glass, which is called fret, and you'll think it'll be one color, but if you work with it for a long time and you stretch it out or you layer it you know, more thinly or thickly, it ends up being a different color. What I like most about glass blowing is what I like most about any artwork, and that is it's the process itself that really intrigues me and fascinates me and keeps it going. Uh, I, I'm more interested in that than I am in the final product, like, you know, thumbprints in an oil painting, I'm thinking of the process, which is sometimes painful. Uh, it's my little nod to suffering from one, for one's art. <laughs> um, that's just getting back into it. So, you know, when you're rolling the blowing rod, it, it does tend to bruise your arm. So, I don't mind. <laughs> This is the only slide that's showing somebody else's work in this um, presentation. Uh, I, I don't know if Rich Aronson or Toa Volander did these, but these are little blue glass ducks, and they're so simple, but they're so beautiful because I know it took 20 years of training to do all of them perfectly with their perfect little blue duck bodies, and I couldn't do that in three hours, so. <laughs> no. Every time you make a piece, it's different, and you can try and say, I'm going to make six purple shot glasses today. And every single piece is gonna look different, and so you have to pay attention to each piece. You also have to pay attention because, again, you are working with glass that's molten, and you really should pay attention. Um, but every piece will come out a little bit differently. You can't repeat the process. You can only go through it again and again and again, and it will feel different every time, and the way the metal tools that you use on the glass hit it every time will be a little bit different and every glass is gonna be different and there's no such thing as a Walmart piece. They're all gonna be unique. And you can have a really great idea of this big, beautiful yellow vase and it might end up being a hat-shaped um, spaceship candy bowl, which I'm very good at. This is my cat, Scrum, teaching me not to be attached to my pieces. They could fall at any moment. I like to tell my friends when I give them a piece of glass as a gift, saying, don't worry if it breaks, I'll make you another. It's the, the piece isn't the point. I was told I should talk about my inspiration. I didn't think I had any, but then I thought about hiking on the long trail. This is me five days out on a solo hike on the long trail last August. You can tell from the bags under my eyes. It's not the sweeping vistas that inspire me. It's looking up at a tree and seeing the light through a leaf. It's looking at a brook and seeing the way the rock is going over just one stone in the brook or a little bug skating across the surface. It's those really tiny little moments that I love to pay attention to. And that's what I'm trying to aim for in my glass, which I'm still working on. <laughs> glass shows really well with light. And so I often photograph it in the living room window or outside to see the light coming through it. 
and it makes it feel alive because to me the pieces are alive. When I'm working them, they're still moving and you work with that movement until it kind of seizes up and cools and you only have so long, so you really have to be very present. In the left-hand side, you can see that there's a bit of a, a crease or a tool mark. And to me, that's the evidence of when I was making that piece. So I look at the piece, I don't see the finished product. I remember, ah, yes, I was making that piece and it kind of folded over and I thought I was gonna have to scrap it, but I was able to save it and work with it. <laughs> this is a piece that my instructor, Rich Aronson, helped me with. I said, I wanna make a wine glass. <laughs> I can't make a wine glass. <laughs> So he said, well, let's try. And I wanted vines going up the sides because I, I like that natural feel to it. And so we made one because sometimes you just have to try. <laughs> and every piece I do is an attempt to try something new, attempt to learn something new from that process at that moment. And so every piece I do, I'm having a new experience and I'm learning something new. And it doesn't matter what the piece ends up like. I've learned something new from it. Again, Kat's teaching lessons. Uh, <laughs> when I think about glass blowing, I think about the last eight years learning on and off and having to take a break for an injury and then coming back to Vermont from Chicago and, and having to find a new glass shop. And I'm glad that I moved back here and was able to find AO glass to continue working. If I ever make a perfectly symmetrical, beautiful piece that you can't see a single tool mark in, I think I'll stop. <laughs> because that's not what I want. I just want to enjoy the process for what it is. Thank you.